Alright fam, it's time we talk about one of the wildest assassins in gaming history, and we're not talking about any of the guys from Assassin's Creed. Going over God Hand last week put us in a mood to talk about more games with crazy ass stories, and thanks to you amazing people in the comments, we were reminded of a franchise that makes God Hand look normal. Whoa whoa whoa, makes God Hand look normal? Y yeah, we spoke about this. No no no, you said a story as wild as God Hand. Makes God Hand look normal is not the same thing. What are you about to bring me into, don't you? Bruh, this is why I tell you to read the script prior to recording. How are you gonna go off what I told you last week? You got the script three days ago, bruh. Hey, don't raise your voice at me. But you messed up. Bitch, you messed up. Shut up. Look, you just do the rest of the opening and I'll read the rest of the script to prepare. Bro, are you? Mm, fine, fine. Where was I? Ah, here we go. When I first picked up the first game in the series back in high school, I thought I was getting into your regular run-of-the-mill anime beat-em-up. But within the first cutscene, I was like, God damn it, don't you? What did you buy? This series is different. The story is insane. And the characters are dead out of their minds. Every single one of them. And that includes the protagonist, who is unlike any you've ever seen. Wait, actually, you know what? He's kind of like Dante. Just a little bit. Today on Honest Gaming History, we're covering Travis Touchdown from the dope series that's getting a new game next year, No More Heroes. Play that intro, son. Yo, Conscience, you good on that script now? Yup, no worries fam, no need to clip out the video, I am prepared now. Okay. Also, real quick, I can now start this video out without first thanking my boy Lewis. He was the first person who ever recommended Travis to me, like way back when we used to work together like two years ago. Like it's been a grip since he asked me to, but hey, look, we here, we finally doing it. He also does reviews on wrestling, anime, and gaming related stuff. So if you wanna check him out, check out his channel, it's in the description below. Now, moving on to the nonsense. No More Heroes was developed by Grasshopper Manufacture and published by Marvelous Entertainment. These guys also developed Lollipop Chainsaw and Killer7. It was directed by Goichi Suda, better known by his nickname Suda51. The first game in the series was released on the Wii in 2007, then an updated port called No More Heroes Heroes is Paradise came out for PS3 and Xbox 360, but at the time it only came out for the PS3 in the US. Its sequel, No More Heroes 2, Desperate Struggle, came out in 2010, then another game added to the nonsense in 2019 called Travis Strikes Again. And now a third game is currently in the works, and it's set to release in 2021. But I don't know, bro. With how this corona is acting, that might get delayed. Bro, don't say that. Yo, I'm just being real. The game follows the story of a Mr. Travis Touchdown, a character who was inspired by Johnny Knoxville from Jackass and the mixed martial artist Josh Barnett. So my man is both crazy and not afraid to suplex you for the one time. Yo, you remember that one time when you got suplexed, don't you? That shit was hilarious. Bro, that shit hurt. But you yelped like a bitch. Ha! Funny. Funny times. Anyways, Travis is your average 27 year old otaku from Sad to Destroy. That's dead the name of where he lives. Both his parents are dead and he spends his time playing video games and collecting weeb shit in a motel room. The only real productive shit he's done with his life was learn some sword and wrestling techniques from his mentor, Thunder Ryu. This guy Thunder Ryu is an ex-pro wrestler who joined the Yakuza by the way. Bro, what? Where the hell did he find a Yakuza member willing to teach him how to fight? I don't know, bro. It's no more heroes. And didn't you say you were prepared? Okay, doesn't mean I can't question the shit though. Anyways, one night after randomly winning a beam sword in an online auction, he gets way too drunk at a bar. This is where he meets this woman named Sylvia. He thinks this girl is bad, and she also has some weird interest in him. She persuades him to join the United Assassination Association. This is pretty much a league of assassins who find pleasure in competing to see who's the best assassin. Travis is like, well shit, I'm broke anyway, so might as well make money killing people. So he accepts her offer, but to join he must first kill the 11th ranked assassin in the association, Helter Skelter. Travis rolls over there on his dope ass scooter, then cuts that dude's head off. Then Sylvia appears, congratulating him for becoming the 11th best assassin in the UAA. And she tells him that he might as well take out everyone above him. So with dreams of becoming number one and the possibility of doing the thing with Sylvia, he begins his journey to become the top ranked assassin by killing everyone above him. Yo, ever since we brought it up, I'm realizing how many of these characters are dead inspired by Cheeks. It's like I've been saying, bro, on the low, all these heroes are out here for booty. He begins his killing speed by slaying the assassin Death Metal. Then he slays Dr. Peace, giving him the ninth ranking spot. His next fight is against the high schooler Shinobu, whose design is fire. He challenges her in the middle of class and she accepts, but she kills her friends since they just heard her mention being an assassin. Girl, what is your problem? They begin their assassin duel and the moment she sees Travis's beam sword, she accuses them of killing her father. 
As they fight, he argues that he used to watch her father's videos till they got old, because apparently her father was a video sword instructor. Then he defeats her, but he refuses to kill her, and instead tells her to come back when she's grown up and much stronger. After that, he goes on to kill Destroy Man, this cosplaying weirdo who thinks he's a superhero or some shit. Then he challenges and defeats a woman who looks like she's straight out of a Metal Gear game, Holly Summers. But when he defeats her, he spares her because he's not out here trying to kill women. That's also part of the reason why he didn't kill Shinobu. That and the girl is dead the youngest in the UAA. She's 18. But Holly is not trying to have that because one assassin must die in their duel. So she kills herself with a grenade. And Travis feels guilty about the whole situation because technically, he didn't kill her. So he moves on with a new sense of respect for his fellow assassins. He proceeds to his next target, but another mysterious assassin named Henry comes and steals the kill. They fight about it, but he escapes and now Travis is waiting for this dude to show his head again. Afterwards, he gets pulled on a date with Sylvia to see a magician. But it turns out that the magician is an assassin, so he kills him. And this smooth ass dude steals a kiss from Sylvia after the kill. His next target is the old lady named Speedbuster, who carries this big ass sniper gun. He runs into her while she's in the middle of fighting his mentor, Thunder Ryu, and watches in horror as she kills him. But before he dies, he gives Travis his beam sword. So our boy kills two birds with one stone by killing the old lady after fighting for his life to get to her. Now he's avenged his master, and he's got the third assassin ranking. He moves on and kills the second ranking assassin, Bad Girl. Now it's time to go after the first. Before he does though, he calls what he thinks is the UAA customer service line, but instead he reaches Sylvia's mother. She tells him that this is all a hoax. The UAA is not a thing. Sylvia just does this shit cause she's freaking crazy. But she tells him to keep pushing forward because a real man finishes what he starts. Bitch, what? And as you can probably guess, Travis is tight about all this. Upon confronting the first ranked assassin, Darkstar, the guy tells Travis that he is his true father and he can reveal the truth about his parents' death. Travis is confused as fuck, just like me, but somehow with the help of Darkstar, he remembers who murdered his parents. It was love interest he had in the past that was never really mentioned in the game until now, this martial artist named Jean. Then as if the memory summoned her, Jean shows up out of nowhere and punches Darkstar through the dick, saying, come on, Travis, how the fuck was this man gonna be your dad? Think, bro. Travis is like, yeah, you're probably right. Then he realizes what this whole quest was for. Way back when this story started, Sylvia overheard Travis complaining about his parents' death over at the bar they met at. She gave him the assassination quest to set him on a journey to kill the person who killed his parents. Bro, what is happening? No way, it gets better. Then Travis asks her who the hell she is. And Jean is like, nah, bro, I can't tell you. My backstory alone will jack up the age rating of this game. But Travis insists, then she reveals that she is Travis's half-sister. What? But wait, there's more. Apparently, Travis's dad left Jean's mom to be with Travis's mom. Then her mom committed suicide. Then the father sexually abused her for years. Bro, why is this plot skyrocketing at the end of the game? So she went and relied on prostitution to make enough money to train herself. Then once she got strong enough, she killed Travis's parents. And the whole time Travis heard this story, my man was just freaking out with each bomb drop. As he should. No one deserves to receive so many life-changing bombs at one time like that. So Travis takes all this in, then says, I hear you, Gene, but vengeance begets vengeance. So they fight. Gene manages to punch Travis through the chest, but Shinobu comes out of nowhere and cuts her arm off to save Travis. Then he kills Gene. Now he's the number one assassin in the UAA, and he avenged the death of his parents. But since he's the number one assassin, other aspiring assassins are now after his ass. And he gets attacked by one while taking a shit. But he's saved by Henry, and now Travis is hyped because he's been waiting for this rematch. As they fight, Henry reveals that he is Travis's secret twin brother. My nigga, why would he wait till now to reveal that? Well, he said the player should have expected a twist of some kind at the end. But conscience, it gets better. Oh God. Henry reveals that Sylvia is his wife. She's been his wife for 10 years. Wait, didn't he and Sylvia? Nah, he just kissed her. Oh, well that's still crazy. The two continue their duel, but the winner is undecided. Instead, we see that their clash was turned into a painting that's being looked at by Sylvia and her daughter, Jean. And we find out later that this daughter is Travis's. Now we move three years later to the plot of No More Heroes 2, Desperate Struggle. Karma comes to bite Travis in the ass when Skelter Helter, the brother of the first assassin he killed, comes in seeking revenge. Travis takes him out easily. Then he's greeted by Sylvia who went MIA three years ago. Our boy comes with the girl tight, demanding she tell him and the player where the hell she's been. But Sylvia's like, fuck all that noise, bruh. Nobody cares. Then she tells Travis that he just killed the 51st ranked assassin in this new UAA that I guess just exists. So now he qualifies to fight for the top spot once again. But he's not trying to start from 51st place. Why should he do that when he was number one three years ago? Then Sylvia tells him that the first game success made assassination trendy. So he just needs to get over it and get on that grind. And plus, if he wins, he'll get a very special prize, obviously alluding towards sex again. But Travis is like, haha, foolish thought. I already had a taste. But then Sylvia is like, 
well, you haven't had the five course meal. Then she tricks him with the possibility of sex again by talking about her mastery in yoga. Are you familiar with any yoga positions? Like, uh, down, downward dog? The dog can do all sorts of things. So can the cobra, the rabbit. C cobra? Rabbit? Like, together? Oh, hold on. Oh, yeah! I'm in it to win, baby. Number one, here I come! God damn it, Travis. So Travis is down to compete now, but then Helter Skelter, somehow still alive, tells Travis that he's a loser here and that this is all part of some bigger plan. Then the next day, he gets at the separate head of his best friend, Bishop. Well, god damn. Guess that was a bigger plan. Sylvia comes over after calling him. Then she tells him that the person responsible for the death of his friend is Jasper Bat Jr., the CEO of Pizza Bat. And this guy also happens to be the number one assassin in the UAA. Well, that's oddly convenient. So Travis pushes forward with the assassination ranking competition, now with booty and revenge driving him. He starts off by killing the leader of a religious cult, Nathan Copeland, whose design is also fire, but fuck this character. He starts to match off by throwing two women at you. Like, why? Then he has a giant robot battle with the assassin Charlie McDonald and his army of cheerleaders. Then he gets thrown into a defense battle against a college girl who has a crush on him named Kimmy Howell. Travis Ravenous, cool hand teasy greasy. <laughs> um, I'm sorry, I, uh, I've always been a fan. Before they fight, she gives him the letter that professes her love to him. But at the end, the letter says that to prove she is his number one fan, she must defeat him. So they fight, but Travis spares her life after defeating her since he's against killing women, especially if they're young. Then he continues on his killing spree by taking out Matt Helms and Chloe Walsh, thus pushing him to rank 23. Sylvia eventually calls him into her office to tell him that the UAA is announcing a battle royale. If he wins, then he'll shoot up to the 10th ranking spot. But once he actually enters the battle, he sees that all of his competition was decimated by the same person he thought Henry killed back in the first game, Dr. Shake. This guy beat and captured Henry out of revenge. Now he wants a one-on-one -on -one with Travis. After Travis assassinates the guy, he saves Henry. Then he gets a surprise visit from Sylvia and Shinobu from the first game. Shinobu has completely left her hate boner for Travis behind, and now she's calling him master. She low-key fell in love with the guy after seeing his strength and realizing that he most likely didn't kill her father. So now she's back from being the best assassin in Asia, and to help Travis with his ranking quest, she took out a few assassins for him, and Travis does not like people taking his kills. But this makes her want to put the moves on Travis, and Travis is not trying to be like one of those pervy teachers, so he pushes her away before anything wild happens. Yeah, this guy is like 30 while Shinobu is like 21. That'd be gross. Eventually, Travis accepts his next fight against an assassin named Ryuji. They have an epic vehicle duel that leads into a sword fight, but then when Travis defeats him, Sylvia comes in out of nowhere and guns the dude down. Our boy is pissed because he saw this guy as a true warrior. There was no reason to just empty the whole clip on him like that. Then Sylvia tells him that this isn't some friendly karate tournament. They are assassins. It's kill or be killed out here in this bitch. And that doesn't sit right with Travis at all. He goes back to his room pissed about what just happened. Then to make matters worse, he gets a call from his dick of a brother, Henry. Henry couldn't just let Travis save him. That's embarrassing. So to make it even, he killed more of Travis's targets to get him to rank five in the UAA. Which makes Travis even more mad because it's only as the amount of kills that were stolen from him. But getting mad won't help him right now. He gets called in to slay his next assassin, Margaret. Then after killing her, he kills his next target, a Russian astronaut. Now it's time to fight the second ranked assassin. When he meets her, he peeps that she shares his distaste for the assassin association. So when he kills her, it really hits him emotionally. Sylvia confronts him and congratulates him, but Travis is done. They're humans. These UAA agents can't use them as toys for their own pleasure. This is real life or death shit, not some game for them to enjoy. Then he threatens to shut down this whole operation, but Sylvia basically tells him to stop bitching, so Travis leaves in a fit. But get this, right before the final boss, Sylvia comes over for some dick. You're kidding. Nope. After that conversation, Sylvia hits him up before coming to his motel room. Then he completes his quest for cheeks. And since she happens to be a yoga instructor, Travis busts out his room triumphantly screaming, downward dog. This game, son. Now with the power of pussy giving him a Zenkai boost, he challenges the number one assassin and the murderer of his best friend, Jasper Bat Jr. There, the guy tells Travis that he did all this because he killed his father back in the first game. So he wants him to feel as much pain as he did. Then this sick dude shows Travis the severed heads of Shinobu, Sylvia, and Henry. And Travis loses it. They fight, but mid-fight, Henry comes in and saves his little brother and lets him know that the heads are fake. Then with the help of his brother, Travis finally assassinates Jasper. And the game ends with Travis finding Sylvia at some random brothel after all these events. He tells her that it's time they head back home. Santa Destroy needs them. And this brings us to the latest game in the series, Travis Strikes Again. It's been seven years since the events of the last game. He got married to Sylvia and had two kids with her. 
but he left them because assassin kept showing up to attack him so now he lives in a forest in texas with his new video game called the death drive mark ii but karma is coming back to bite him in the ass once again you remember bad girl from the first game right well her father bad man who actually comes from another shooter game called killer is dead has always been salty about that death so he waited 10 years to go after travis for revenge 10 years though my guy what took you so long the crazy drunk finds and he's drunk too my nigga do better <laughs> The crazy drunk finds Travis in his trailer, and they proceed to duke it out while the opening credits roll. Then the Death Drive Mark II wakes up and transports him into his digital world. They find out that this console was created by a Dr. Juvenile, and if they complete the six games within it, they'll obtain the six Death Balls and be able to gain one wish. Sounds a lot like Dragon Balls to me. Yo, you're right, I never peeped. Bro, are you dumb? Well, with no other option left but to work together, Batman and Travis make a temporary truce in order to get through these games, collect the death balls, and use the wish to resurrect Bad Girl. As they proceed through the games, Travis runs into the characters from other Suda games, like Uehara from Silvercase. They eventually find out that his console started getting used for cloning and super soldier development for the government. Because no matter which video game world you're in, the government is always going to be low-key evil. Dr. Juvenile is against this though, which is why she sabotaged the whole project. But if Travis and Batman cut all the death balls, it will reset the mother machine which is still in the possession of the CIA. If it resets, then the government will be able to continue their super soldier and cloning research. So the doctor threatens to destroy the country if that happens. But Travis and Batman give no fucks and they continue collecting the death balls by beating the different games in the console. By the way, the art direction for this series just gets better as it progresses. Like this shit looks beautiful for real. Anyways, they managed to collect all the death balls, but because the last game was incomplete, their wish actually brings Bad Girl back as a dog. <laughs> A dog, my nigga? A dog? My man's is sick! So then our boy Travis gets transported to the CIA, like the actual CIA, where he tears his way through the agents, only to find Dr. Juvenile with the mother machine. And for some reason, she looks like this. Before they fight, Travis admits that the doctor is a genius. Her games were dope, but he understands her disappointment in the government. So he asks her to return to her real body so she can continue making video games for him to play. But the doc starts the boss fight anyways, and Travis reluctantly kills her. Then he goes to the mother machine, and guess what? Our boy gets transported to Mars. Nigga, what? Where's this game going? Bruh, it's no more heroes. On Mars, he meets the creator of the original Death Drive and the doctor's mentor, John Winter. There, John tells him that he left Earth and escaped to Mars to live a perfect life, and it's been pretty lit so far. Then he asks Travis to join him here, and while the offer does tempt him, he declines and gets sent back to Earth. And this brings us to the Bubblegum Fatal DLC. Shinobu has returned, and at the right time too, because Travis's older brother Henry just shows up with a bunch of goons. This man basically tells his brother that he recently saw the Thor movie, and Loki reminded him of his annoying ass little brother. So now he's inspired to set Travis straight. Honestly, I don't get how you're so high following this crazy ass story. How you gonna spark a whole DLC just cause you watched Thor? Bro, it's- No more heroes, yeah, I got it. So, along with the Henry issue, pro wrestlers from freaking space show up to take over the planet. Nope, that's it, I'm done. Pro wrestlers from space, bro? A father who wants revenge for his daughter after she's been dead for 10 years? On top of that, are we not gonna talk about how Travis took his brother's wife married her and gave her two goddamn kids? I mean, the savagery is funny to watch, but bruh, this game is off the fucking rails. Like, actually off the fucking rails. Bro, we're almost done. There's literally just a few more crazy things that happen. Then we're done. <sighs> fine, fine, but I'm not doing it for you. I'm doing it for the fam. So if the wrestlers weren't enough, a wannabe superhero and the AI from the Death Drive all show for the smoke. I cannot make this up. He beats all of them. Then he finds out where the final death ball is. It's been with Sylvia all this time, cause why not? He goes to spend some time with his wife and kids. Then he beats the completed final game of the Death Drive. With that done, they resurrect Bad Girl in her human form this time. And that's it. That's the end of Travis's story until we get to No More Heroes 3. In the comments below, let us know how you felt about that wild ass story. But how are you feeling, Conscience? I'm feeling like I should choose the next Honest Gaming History topic. What, you didn't like No More Heroes? Nah, that shit is indeed hilarious as fuck, but I can only handle so much absurdity at one time, don't you? God hand and this, and this shit was, whew. Yeah, that, that shit's a lot. I right, fine, we can do something normal next time. Don't, and hey, don't you? Yeah? You still a bitch. What's going on, fam? Thank you guys so much for watching another episode of Honest Gaming History, this time on the boy, Travis Touchdown. Never did I think when I rent, when I bought No More Heroes in high school back, I think it was on Glide. It was on some random, now defunct game, game trading service. Bought the game on Glide. Never did I think years later I would be talking about it on YouTube. But yeah, 
Now you guys know about No More Heroes. Like the video if you enjoyed it. Let's try to get to 1500. Actually, no, wait. I think we beat that. I think we beat 1500 likes. So I'm gonna test y'all. Let's try 1700 likes in 24 hours. Let's do it. I believe in you, fam. We can do it. Comment to us if you'd like to see me cover in future episodes of Honest Gaming History. Subscribe if you want to see more of what I produce. And share to honestly just spread the word about No More Heroes because while researching this, I realized how few people really know about this series. And it's honestly a pretty good series. So I think a lot more people should check it out. It's wild as fuck. It's off the rails, but hey, man, it's mad fun. Especially with the, I mean, I don't think anybody has a weed now, so you can't really like have fun like we did with the nunchuck, unless the, the new Switch version, I'm, I'm rambling, let's move on. Shout out to my patrons, without you guys that would not be able to make videos like this, and if you are not already a patron and would like to become one, go to my Patreon page in the description below and find out how you can support the channel for only a dollar a month. And one of the perks you get with that is watching these videos earlier than everybody else. If you want to watch more, I got some videos on the screen for you to check out. Follow me on my social media, my Twitch down below if you want to see me stream some video games. Shout out to my editor Akash. Once again, my boy is killing it with the edits. Thank you so much for doing your thing. I appreciate you. Also, shout out to Ari underscore Dynamics who did the recent content art that you, saw, that you guys saw in this video. So let me know how you felt about that in the comments below. Okay, I think that's everything. So, with that being said, as usual, be easy, stay lit, stay healthy out there, Black Lives Matter, and don't forget, you could do whatever the hell you put your mind to. All it takes is practice and time. Take care, fam.